Hi, ladies. This is Dr. Melissa Rich, and you are listening to the Taking Care of Your Temple podcast. And this podcast is designed to help women connect with God regularly, use His grace, power, and strength to improve their physical, emotional, spiritual, and mental health. And there are four ways that we do this. One is keeping our focus on God. It's so easy to get distracted by all the different things going on around us. The second one is acknowledging that we are not enough on our own. We're not strong enough, capable enough, quick enough, whatever it is, enough. Um, I go through this a lot. And the good thing is that we don't have to be because God wants us to ask Him for His help. Thank goodness. Third thing, remembering it's not about perfection. It's about progress. And that's another one I have to tell myself a lot. I didn't get it perfectly, but I'm getting better. Fourth thing is working on being aware of the messages that we are giving to ourselves and then correcting them when we need to, because our thoughts are powerful and our thoughts dictate how we think, feel, act, just everything. So the goal of this podcast is to give you guys some really good tools and some techniques and some tips that can help you feel and function better. I have an awesome guest today that I'm going to introduce in just a moment, and she is going to help you really get clutter under control. But we're going to have a quick prayer before we get started, and then we'll jump in. Lord, I just want to thank you for this time together. I ask that you will bless this podcast, the people who are listening. I pray that you will bless Jennifer and I, that we will really be able to be helpful in the things that we're doing, and I just ask that this will make a difference. Thank you for loving us. Amen. Okay, so today I am very happy to have Jennifer Snyder here. She is a good friend of mine. She is a certified professional organizer. Did I say that right? That is correct, yes. Okay. Tell me, how did you get into that? Because that's not the normal thing that people get into. No, it's not. In fact, I was a wedding planner. Ah, I didn't know that. And so I was a wedding planner and had an opportunity to, I was trying to meet with a lady to to plan a, a holiday feast, actually. And she had kept rescheduling and kept rescheduling. And and so when we finally sat down, we were at her dining room table and she apologized. I'm like, there's no need to apologize. And she said, my life is just so crazy and this, that, and the other. And I told her, you know, I come from a background of processes and efficiency. And, you know, I've got some time during the day. If you if you need some help with that, I'd be happy to help. Mm-hmm. And she was like, you know what I need help with? And she took me by the hand and she showed me her home office. Oh. And she wept. She's like, can Aww. you fix this. Oh my gosh. And and I was like, are you kidding? With one hand tied behind my back. I'd love to. <laughs> and so so I spent my, you know, my uh, my time during the next week not dedicated to events organizing her office and making sense of it and and then at the end I I sh- you know, it was the big reveal, you know, this yeah, is where yeah. you can find this and this is where you can find that. And, and did she cry again? Because she, she was indeed, she did. <laughs> she did. And so so the best part of the whole story is I went home at the end of that day and I told my husband that was the most difficult but the most rewarding work I have uh-huh. ever done. I bet. And his reaction to that was you're not going to make a business of this, are you? Oh, no. <laughs> and so within 24 hours, I had a website and a business <laughs> name and a DBA and was moving forward. And I did I did both. I did the wedding planning and organizing, okay. a press release, you know, making an, an, an announcement to my Facebook friends. And then God started telling me through a series of very clear events that wedding planning was not where he wanted me. And that he wanted, this is where he wanted me. And, and when, like all the times so I know better. And so yeah. I, I mm-hmm. knew what God was saying, but I wasn't listening. I chose yeah. not to listen. And, and then he spoke loud enough that I couldn't deny it anymore. Yeah. And so I, do that. I gave away, I didn't sell it. I gave away my wedding planning business Wow. and jumped into organizing with both feet and have been blessed ever since. That's a great story. How did you get your training? How do you become a certified uh, professional organizer? At the time, when I got my certification, there was it was the it was BCPO Board Certified Professional Organizer. It was an okay. independent. It was an independent group that that did the certifications, and we had at the time there was about thirty books that we had to read. Wow! And then we had to have. Uh, 1,500 documented hours working with clients in the field. Oh, 
And so okay. by documentation, that invoicing yeah, and yeah, that sort right. of thing. And then we had to take a test. Paid a lot of money to take a test. One of those where they took my watch and sent me into a room with a computer. All I had was my pencil and my driver's license. Wow. And and so I took the test and and I read the books and I did the work and and I got my certification and and I still have to maintain CEUs yeah. every year. Mm-hmm. Good for you. Thanks. So currently your business is called Need is a Pin. You're located it's Need is a Pin organize, organizing and cleaning. So sure. my the local is Need as a Pin organizing and cleaning. The LLC okay. is actually Need as a Pin organizing experts LLC. Okay. okay. But you've recently added on cleaning. We have added on cleaning, yes. We added that in 2018. Yeah. Because I would imagine a lot of people who are not organized also need help with the cleaning. That is correct. That is correct. They Once we get organized, they want to get cleaned. Yeah, of and, course. And stay that way. Correct. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So let's get into the discussion points. Why is clutter such a problem or or is it as much, I mean, it drives me crazy, but maybe it's, is it not that big of a deal? What do you think? I think it depends on the person. So there okay. are people, and one of my children, one of my sons is one of these people, the clutter doesn't bother them at all. Oh, okay. And there there are people who, for whatever reason, brought them to the place, whether it's, whether it's psychological, whether it's neurodiversity, whatever it is, the clutter is comforting to them. You know, we hear a lot of the the term minimalism, but there's also maximalism where, where certain individuals are just more comfortable with a lot of stuff. Right. Where clutter becomes a problem is where you're unable to fulfill your life as you want to live it, or if it becomes an issue of of sanitation, of keeping it clean, yes. or or relationship issues when someone else in the household okay. has an issue, it can't live that way. So like if a couple, one person is fine with all the clutter and it drives the other person crazy. Correct. That's, I hear that a lot. Yeah. I hear it a lot. Yes. Yeah. And that was kind of the way it was with my late husband and I, and mm-hmm. I'll talk about that more later. So for me, I'm one of those people that clutter absolutely bothers. And I literally remember being in college in my dorm room. I'd have a homework assignment or test to study for, and I absolutely could not do it if my room was a mess. I couldn't do it. I had to put things away. I mean, it was a small space, so it didn't take long, but I had to put things up, get everything in its place, and then I could study or whatever. So I have always had that mentality. But for a lot of people, I mean, the messy environment, to me, I just think a messy environment is distracting. But you're saying that for some people, maybe not? That is correct. Um, I believe, for me, clutter makes energetic noise. And oh, that's a good way to put it. And so for me, what happens is all of this energetic noise, visual busyness. Yes takes away from the focus on what it is I need to do. Yeah. Whether it's study for for my next degree, whether it's watching a television show. And and what what it does is it says to people like you and I, mm-hmm. it says, you have unfinished business over here. It's not quite you're not quite ready to yeah. focus. And and so then our brain, is, while we're trying to focus, a piece of our brain is over here distracted by the unfinished business. That's a good way to put it. And, yeah. And, but then again, there's individuals like my husband, and we are Mary Poppins married to Jesse James. <laughs> he, he, it doesn't bother him at all. He can, he can not, he, his brain is, is capable of not seeing it. He doesn't he doesn't even recognize that he left something out or mm-hmm. or things are piling up and you know he recognizes there's a pile and a, at at some point a pile of dirty clothes needs to go somewhere other than the middle of the bedroom floor. But for as far as his operating day to day and accomplishing the things that he needs to do they they impact him in no way whatsoever. I hear what you're saying. And one of the things that I have always said is clutter oppresses the spirit. And I think it does for some people, but from Mm -hmm. what you're saying, maybe it doesn't for other people. But I think, and I I may be wrong, there's a group like my late husband that I think it bothered him, but he just didn't know what to do about it. I think he would look at it and get overwhelmed and not know where to start. So he would try to kind of just 
block it out and ignore it. But it wasn't that it didn't bother him. It did. He just didn't know what to do. Does that make sense? That, may, that makes perfect sense. And there are so many people, so, so many individuals come to me and say, you know, I know how to do it. I just don't know how to start. I need a place to, I need a yeah. place to start. And, and for a lot of us, Melissa, what it is, is we just don't have processes in place uh-huh. to do the things. For example, if, if our home isn't mapped out in such a way to allow flow in the capacity that our brain operates, yeah, the, our, the flow from our brain is going to be impeded by the layout of our home. Right. And, and so wherever that disconnect is between our physical space and, and the flow of, of our thinking style, that's where the bottleneck is. That's where the clutter starts. And, and so if we can understand what's happening, you know, and most of the time we try to, to, to set up our homes like our parents did. Oh, so yeah. we, we follow, we mm-hmm. follow our, our model as children. And I, you know, I don't know about you, but my thinking style is, is vastly different from my mother's. Yeah. And so how she would set up a home and how I set up a home are different. Or when you, when you get married, then you right. have one spouse saying, well, my family has always done it this way. My family yeah. has always done it this way. And we try it. We try to we try to um, cooperate and integrate one another's styles together, but we also have to be aware when that is not necessarily helpful for us. Yeah. So what you're saying, it sounds like to me, is the whole flow of the home that sometimes people just get stuck. That is correct. So when you are organizing, I'm just curious, do you also find sometimes like you're rearranging things to make it make more sense so that there is a better flow? That's it. That's exactly what we do. We, okay. when, when I go into a home, I ask, you know, if they, clearly they, they've called me in for a reason. Right. So there's something that's not working. Yeah. But what I want to know first is what is working. Show me what okay. does work, whether it's your laundry process, whether it's how you prepare your, your meal plan for the week, something in your in yeah. your home or in your office or whatever something is working and that's what I want to see what's working so that gives me so much so much information about how your brain works and then by being able to see where things get stuck yeah i can i can put the two together and say okay what about this and what if we tried this and you know a lot of times we we try to to do what pinterest says we try to do what tiktok yeah, says yeah. and and those aren't necessarily going to work for us so it sounds like you're saying and correct me if i'm wrong that most of us have kind of a personal style of maybe organizing or or functioning and if we are not if our homes our offices whatever aren't organized in that way even though it may be a good style that's not necessarily going to work for us? That is exactly right. Each okay. of us are unique individuals. Yeah. And mirroring mirroring something, you know, we can start with someone else, just like I can write a letter for you, but you're going to have to go back through and yeah, make it yeah. your own. So we can start with a model that someone else created, but we we want to be able, we we have to be able to make it our own because only we know who we are. And so then that brings in the question of, of married couples whose mm. style is paramount, mm-hmm. whose style matters. And so it's the one who's in charge of that particular chore. So at my okay. at my house, my husband cooks. So the kitchen is outlined for him, okay. not for me. Well, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. And so whoever does laundry, the laundry room and all that should be according to the way they do it. That is correct. Do you, I, I've seen where sometimes people will say, okay, you're, this organizational style and you're this, I mean, do you all do that or you just kind of figure it out as you go with people? We just figure it out. I, I think trying to put someone into a box is going to be, is going to be equally unbeneficial if that's a word equal, you know, equally challenging. Yeah. Yeah. To to try to figure that out. Okay. Yeah. One of the things (laughs) That I, I, I a show that I never could watch because it literally gave me cold chills was the hoarding show. It, it drove me crazy. I just couldn't do it. But I think that there is kind of a fine line sometimes between clutter and hoarding. What are your thoughts on that? There, there is, and in fact, so many of us think that we're either a hoarder or not a hoarder, and it's not quite so black and white. Okay. So chronic hoarding disorder is actually 
OCD. And, yeah. and so that's where it comes from. And it is when individuals struggle to get rid of things. They okay. feel like they need to keep it for right. whatever reason. Right. Yeah. And most of the time it's because it's useful or because it is a a token mm-hmm. of something to help them remember something by. Okay. And so a, a great example that's only my that's just my own is <clears throat> let's say mother and daughter like to go to junk sales and garage sales mm-hmm. and they had this great time and they bought a lamp together. And so mom mom passes, daughter is still here, still loves to junk. Right. And then every time she sees a lamp that is similar yeah. to the one she bought because the lamp reminded her of these great times with mom, she buys this lamp and she buys this lamp. And then she can't get rid of the lamps because they all now remind her of these good times with mom. And she believes that getting rid of the lamps would therefore somehow not be loving right. to mom. So the junk takes on emotional value. Yes. Even though that's really not accurate, you can get rid of the lamp and still keep the memory, but people feel like that's that's one reason they have such a hard time letting go. That is right. And you know, and it's different, you know, we all have sentimental things. Oh yeah. You know, we you know, we don't feel like we should be able to get rid of our <clears throat> excuse me, our, our high school letter jacket. But it's not the end of the world if we do. And and so it's just a matter of what is most important to us and how much of our homes do we want to dedicate to this? And I think it's important to say, though, there are individuals who are chronically disorganized yep. that are not chron- people with chronic hoarding disorder, nor are they just sloppies. And, yeah. you know, there's nothing wrong with being sloppies. I'm married to one. I've got I've got a couple of them <laughs> as kids. And, and so, but the sloppies know how they like to live. Right. And so there's there's a there's a freedom in that and a self-awareness in that. And so there is something different and there is help. There is help for people with chronic hoarding disorder and yeah. chronic disorder or chronic disorganization. But there's also and it suffice it to say those are both very different than squalor. And so a lot of yes. times squalor is misconstrued as being chronic hoarding disorder when those are very different things. So what's the difference between squalor? So squalor and is is hoarding. is is for lack of a better word filth, just dirty. Right. And so sometimes when you have a lot of stuff, you can't clean it very well. Yeah, yeah, because there's so much stuff. There's yeah. too much stuff. And so so what happens is a hoard or a chronically disorganized scenario would become less clean, but when we talk about squalor, we're talking about just long-term filth. Yeah, and like bugs and maybe mice and yeah, and yeah. mold pizza boxes yes, yes. piled. You know, you okay. can't use the sink. Yeah, those yeah. sorts of things. And that's where you think, how do people live that way? Those are that the, uh, definitely intervention. Mental health professionals need yeah, to be involved yeah. with those. So I um, again, my husband was a very different uh, mentality than I am because I'm, I'm not that sentimental. I mean, I have things that I have sentimental attachment to, but I pretty much once or twice a year go through my closet. I haven't worn that in a while. Let's get rid of it. I mean, I'm not keep it. Ed's favorite thing to say when I would try to get rid of things was we might need that someday. Mm -hmm. And I told him, I'm going to put that on your tombstone. I mean, (laughs) just, and so when he passed away and this was about 11, 12 years ago now, I remember I went through my house because there were piles everywhere and he would not let me get rid of them because he might need it someday. Mm -hmm. The most I could do was straighten the piles. And it drove me nuts for like 20, however many years. I got rid of 60, six zero boxes of just stuff that nobody Mm -hmm. is ever going to need. And I felt like when I got rid of it, I walked through my house and I was like, I can breathe. I mean, it was the most liberating thing. Mm -hmm. And I honestly, I don't think really for him it was that helpful. I think he was just used to it and he was afraid to let stuff go. Fear. Fear is the greatest motivator to keep more than we need. Yeah. What 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 if we need it? Well, what is there something else that you can use instead type right. of scenario. And you know, my husband is the same way. We had we had a old school deep square tube television. Gosh. And <laughs> and I wanted to give it away. And he was like, you're not getting rid of that TV, are you? I'm like, well yeah. And he was like, why? What if we need it? 
well, if For we what? need another television, we have the means to buy a smaller one yeah. versus, yeah. you know, heating and cooling and insuring and, and yeah. managing this giant television that is, that is a, a dinosaur. And so once kind of. we realize, once we can identify what it is we need, then we realize that the other things are simply superfluous. They they don't necessarily have a place in our lives. Yeah, and I am I do think that even though there there I think there are objects that even though we use them infrequently, we still need them. Mm-hmm. I have one pair of black heels because I never wear heels. I'm with you. <laughs> and and I maybe once every two or three years I wear them. So I keep them. But it's not you know, because if I throw them away, then every two or three years, I probably have to buy a pair of heels. Mm-hmm. So, so it's things like that, I think, yes, we're all going to have things like that. But other stuff, I feel like, eh. get rid of it. Are there certain types of objects you find that people tend to hold on to more than others? I find that, so first of all, I find men much more sentimental about their belongings. Really? Than it's it's very interesting. Oh, when that's I, funny. I would have thought it was women. You would have. But I, and so my theory, it's not scientific. But my yeah. theory is that women are just there. It's more acceptable socially for us to to us for us to demonstrate our our emotions and our attachments to one another as as individuals and men. They they're expected to be a little more reserved in as far as their yeah, their emotions, yeah, true. and so so therefore the things hold on a little better. A lot of what people hang on to are mementos from school, yeah, or I see that, or when their parents pass, okay. they have a hard time letting go of the things that belong to their parents because that's letting go of their parents because that's yeah. that's letting go of their parents, yeah. and if if. You know, if you were to put something on my headstone, it would be the most loving thing you can do for your children is to get rid of most of your stuff. Yes, yes. Because everything that you hang on to, somebody somewhere yeah. is going to have to make a decision yes. about that. And you are just delaying the decision. And I've had several decision. friends who've had to do that mm-hmm. and have spent weeks, if not months, going through stuff. And it's grueling. Yes. And it's draining. Mm-hmm. It just, ugh. Yeah, it wipes you out. Um, my experience has also been that clutter not only happens in your home, but it can happen in your garage, in your car, in your office. Agree, disagree? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, what? and pretty much what happens is, is especially if we have guests in our home, mm. those areas where the guests will see are going to be in nice shape. Those are going uh, okay. to be less cluttered yeah, yeah. than the back spaces. And many of us will clutter up our sleeping rooms before anything else, garages, sheds, offices, cars, anywhere we can hide clutter, we will. And and what hap- what I believe is the way that we feel on the inside is is what is demonstrated on the outside. Yeah. And so if we feel feel jumbled and and in a mess and confused and chaotic on the inside, we are going to create that in whatever space we occupy, whether yeah. it be home office, car. So I obviously feel very organized (laughs) because that's how my spaces are. Okay. I'm with you. I'm with you. Yeah. So what kinds of systems or tools do you share with your clients to help them? And I guess I should back up. Let's back up a little bit. Someone listening to this who is just feeling totally overwhelmed, where do they start? Because I'm sure you get that question a lot. I do. And if someone is overwhelmed and they want to do it on their own, and they want to do it on their own, the best thing, the very best thing they can do is A, get an accountability partner. Okay. Accountability yeah. partner that is not in that that inner circle. Yeah. You want you don't want someone who's going to have endless grace for you. True. You don't want yeah. it to be your spouse or your parent or your right. sister or your children. You want it to be someone uncomfortably outside of that uh-huh. inner circle not not a total stranger of course no. but someone of whom you respect and you care about what they think of of you and it's and it's especially helpful if they have something about which they need to be held accountable as well oh uh, okay and yeah. so it's a partnership you but want it, someone who can prod you a little exactly. bit. Exactly. Somebody okay. who you don't want to let down. Okay. And so right. then you have an accountability partner. You say, "Okay, friend, I'm going to do this." 
by this date. So then- That's a good one, by a date. Yes. yes. So then when you work in your home, you just map out, map, just make you a list, an unofficial, nothing fancy kind of list of these are the areas that that bo- are bothersome. And as you encounter extra areas or you, you haven't right. opened that ba- bottom drawer in the bathroom for a long time, you're like, oh, look, that needs some help too. Just add it to the bottom of your yeah. list and just work through it. But work through it in- 10, 15 minute increments. I think that's good because it's so easy to get overwhelmed. Right. And if you look at, if you say, hmm, I need to organize my pantry. And so someone who is not skilled and experienced in doing that, that's going to be an eight hour job depending on your pantry and its current conditions. And you have to take everything out and then you have to clean it and then you have to put everything back in. And then you get lost in your own things. Yes. Yes. And so if you work for 15, and then once you get your sea legs, move it up to 20 or 30, work in these tiny little increments. Because what happens is we see a project and we're like, oh, I need a whole day for that. Right. And we're busy as humans. As a, as yeah, a human yeah. race, we are busy and we don't have whole days uh-uh. to dedicate no. to anything anymore. And so if you, we all have 15 minutes. Yes. And I love that you said your pantry because true story. This last weekend, I made a pot of, um, I I have a chicken vegetable soup recipe I make in my crock pot. And I was thinking, I don't like thin, watery soup. I like it thicker. So I put some oat grain in, and that helps. But I thought, I wonder if I could, if I have like some cream of chicken soup or mushroom or something that I could put in. So I checked, and I did. I had a can of cream of mushroom soup. Great. Start to put it in. I happened to check the date on it. It expired 2018, Mm -hmm. and this is 2022, so I decided, and it's a cream soup. So I'm like, oh my gosh, it was, it would probably be horrible. So I threw it away. Um, And and I'm pretty good about that. I mean, Mm -hmm. I do check my pantry, but it's easy for Mm -hmm. stuff to slip past you. And I realized this sometime this Christmas holiday, I've got to go through my medicine stuff because that can expire as well. Absolutely. But but I think you're right. It's it's more manageable if we set a timer for 30 minutes. Mm-hmm. And whatever you get done in 30 minutes, that's what you do. And then you can come back the next day or right. something. You know, and another thing to keep in mind is you can't organize clutter. You have to declutter yes. before you can organize anything. That's a good point. And so if you have a lot of clutter, organizing systems aren't going to help until yeah. you get your stuff under under control. under control. So how do they do that? I mean, what I've always seen is the, you make three piles, keep, give away, toss. I mean, is that a good, do, what do you recommend for people? How do they start getting that clutter into a more manageable stuff? So what I, so it it just kind of depends on the space. So let's, let's say a pantry, for example, I've seen all sorts of things stored in a pantry, everything from, from candles to lunch boxes to office supplies. And and so what you want to do is you want to take everything out. And so if we were to work on our pantry in 15 minute increments, we would work on one shelf. Good. We would work on one shelf. And so A, ask yourself, is this something that I need? Do I need this? And then if you do, then it's a keep. If you do not, then then you can donate it where you can donate it. You can discard it, discard where you need to. But if you're not sure, then it is, what is the worst that could happen if I don't have this? Yeah. And and many times it's really not much. But then it's this. And so then the next question would be, where would I look for this? Would I look for this in the pantry? Uh, okay. And so yeah, that's a good point. Wherever yeah. you would look for something, that's where it lives. And then a lot of clutter is is as of our own doing. We use our credit cards and debit cards to buy our clutter, and then we bring it home in fancy bags and don't have anywhere to put them. Right. And so same thing with things coming into your home. If you if you bought a kite and you went and flew the kite with your with your grandchildren and bring it back in the house and and the yeah. easiest thing to do is to stuff it somewhere in the garage but right. then the question is 
where would I look for this? If you want to fly the kite again with your grandchildren next weekend. If you want to find the kite again, where would you look for it? And usually that first place that you think of is where it should go. That's a good point. Even if it's not where where your friend or your neighbor or your sister would store it. It's about you and you finding what you need when you need it. And what works for you. Yeah, that's a really good point. Mm -hmm. You know, I I love the bite-sized thing. Mm -hmm. Um, And one of the things that I have found is when I clean out a drawer or a closet or whatever, I literally, and this just may be my personality, but I will, every time I go by, I'll open the drawer and look in or I'll look into the closet. And I just feel good because I got it cleaned out. I mean, Mm -hmm. it's like I'm patting myself on the back. It gives Mm -hmm. me satisfaction. There's immediate reward. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And it's very visual. You can see it. It looks better. You can find things. I also like what you said about things needing a place to live. I'm a big believer in that. And I would always tell my sons when they were growing up, no, it cannot live in the middle of the floor. Mm -hmm. That's not a good place for it. Not the kitchen counter. No, it has to have a place to live. Right. At my house, we have a holding area. Okay. And the holding area gets cleaned. Uh, We start one of the, I do all my chores as soon as I wake up and I clear off the holding area before we start the day. So I basically reset everything and we start fresh. That's a great idea. And so anything that comes along, you know, now's a great time with all of our Christmas gifts and they live in this holding area. And that gives me an opportunity and the holding area is not hidden. It is out in the open. (laughs) And so if I don't process these things, they're clutter, they're visual clutter. Yeah. And so it's a reminder to do the work. And so, yeah. so if it's sitting there, every time I walk past it, I can, I can consider it for a minute. And, right. And so, you know, sometimes it not might take me the whole day, but as soon as I, as soon as I make a decision, I take it and put it away in its new home. And there is satisfaction in yeah, that. That absolutely. is, you know, to me, that's the equivalent of, of a day full of errands or, right. or a, yeah, yeah. just a job well done. Yeah. So obviously, one of the things that we didn't say should have, if you have someone listening who's totally overwhelmed and doesn't know where to start, one of the things they can do is call a professional organizer. That is correct. Is there like a website or something that they can look people up on? There are there are several organizations okay. that that have codes of ethics. And okay. so I would suggest if if there is someone who is struggling to to look up the uh there's the Institute for Challenging Disorganization, they okay. are they are the credentialing organization. You Institute know, with, for Challenging Disorganization. That's yes. interesting. And so they provide the education. They prov- and they have a lot of resources on their website. is okay. a is a free resource. It's called the Clutter Quality of Life Scale. It's CQLS, and it is that. a free assessment made by a research a university research student. And it, you answer some questions yeah. and then you get a report as to where you fall on the right. continuum of, of clutter issues. And so their, their website is challengingdisorganization.org. Okay. They are very helpful. They have a, um, a listing of their organizers who are credentialed. They, they facilitate the CPOCD credential where it's a certified professional yeah. organizer specializing in chronic disorganization. And then there is also in in the United States, there's National Association of Productivity and Organize Productivity and Organizing, and that is NAPO, NAPO NAPO.net. They have a a Find My Organizer. And then in Canada, there is um, the uh, um, there's Canadian professional organizers. There's a name for it. I I know it, but that's okay. But in Canada, they have some. They, yeah, there's one yeah. in Canada as well, and a lot of organizers will do virtual organizing. Oh, interesting! I had not even thought about that. Yes, and so it's huh. and so it's basically you have a coach on the computer, and they're not they're not in your home with you, but you talk through the systems and you talk through the process of of creating the systems for you in your space. And so you have support, correct? Which I think would be very helpful. And I guess you just like uh, record it with your phone so that they can, you know, you show them so they can see. Yes. I when imagine. I do virtual organizing, they're usually on their phone or um, they'll be on their computer and we'll talk about things. They'll, they'll send right. me photos of yeah, their yeah. spaces before our session. 
Okay. And that we'll, makes sense. and we'll talk through. And, and so with you, it's, imagine a coaching session, it's a coaching right. session about your stuff. Right. Cause they're going to have to do the work, but you are holding their hand and giving them guidance. That's right. And holding them accountable. Yeah. Oh, that's good. I yes. haven't thought about that. That would be really good. Okay. So again, I'm real big on changing your mentality. Mm-hmm. And I think with people who are overwhelmed by clutter, they end up thinking things like, it's just too much. I, I can't deal with it. I don't know what to do. I'm mm-hmm. just going to ignore it. Right. So here are some that I've come up with. You can tell me what you think. I regularly go through my possessions and get rid of the ones I'm no longer using or no longer need. Mm-hmm. Okay. Everything I bring into my spaces, home, office, car, has a place to live. Mm-hmm. I think that's a really important one. And I easily give away things that I am no longer using and have no part in my life. Perfect. I think that a lot of times when I have clients, I really am big on working them, helping them to change their thoughts. And I will tell them these things and they go, but I'm not doing that. And I'm like, but do you want to do it? So it's not necessarily where we are now, but it's where we want to be. Right. So if you tell yourself regularly that I go through my possessions and I weed things out and I'm, I'm okay with it, you're going to become that way. And I think there's some, there's people who have, who struggle with a system. Oh yeah. And so I think the first, the first way to lovingly part with the things the, that you, the excess, the blessings, yeah. the excess blessings that we have. There you go. Is to, is to identify a charity that means something to yes. you. Yes. And if you can identify a charity that you can, to whom you can give and your heart just feels so big, then it's going to be easier. And, and with my, my, my children, the, my grown, my big boys, they're grown when they were little we clean out their rooms and it's like, baby, we're going to, we need to give some stuff to the yeah. boys with no toys. Yeah. You guys have so many toys. Yeah. We're, we're going to give to the boys with no toys. And they were so excited about it. They loved to give to the boys with no toys. And, and so having that in place is, is a start. And I do think that there is a struggle. Sure. We all know that we need to go through our pantry. We need to go right. through our medicine cabinet. We need to go through our linen closet. Yeah. But who has the time? What what external stimulus is there to do the things? And and so that's a lot of the reason why there was the year long declutter challenge this year. Is yes, every and I day talk about that. Yeah. every day there's so today we're going to declutter our socks. We can declutter <laughs> our socks in fifteen minutes. Yeah. There's our fifteen minute. A yeah. 15 minute project. So I do want you that. I'm glad that you, you said that. Um, I want, I know that you'd have different challenges and different things going on all the time. Um, tell me what you have like going on now or coming up. And if people want to participate, how do they do that? Right now we are nearing the end of what I consider the biggest, baddest declutter challenge <laughs> ever. Um, all the other challenges have been 30 days okay. and, and this particular challenge has gone on for an entire year. Wow. We started January 1st and have had a a small area of our home to declutter every, every day. single day wow. and and it will it will end December 31st of this year. And it's been it's been in a Facebook group called Need as a Pen Declutter Together. And so we're nearing the end of that, but what's so exciting and and no one has known all this time, there's been a few people that have like, you need to make a book. And so all of those challenges are going to be a book. Excellent, Jennifer. Under the, um, so kind of like the principle of a daily devotional. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be a, a daily declutter. And it's just a little bit at a time to, yes. to serve as, to serve as a, you know, a reminder, a tickler that we need to do just a little bit to maintain so, our home. And it's bite size. It's bite size. They can they can do that. Mm-hmm. I think that's great. When is the book coming out? Do you know? Well, we ha- I have to finish out the year. Oh, so then, yeah. so so hopefully, hopefully early in 23. Okay. So if people want to follow you, want to, you know, contact you, how can they do that? So we, you, anybody can find me at neatasapin.com. Okay. And, and so there's, there's several ways to reach me there. I'm on Facebook. They can follow Neat as a Pin Organizing and Cleaning on Facebook. Okay. We are on Instagram and we'll have a TikTok before too terribly long. Yay. And, you know, or if someone just needs to, to talk to me, send me an email. Send me okay. an email. I would and like to. they can to, do it through your website. Absolutely. Well, it's just Jennifer at neatasapin.com. Okay. That's easy, easy to remember. Mm-hmm. 
Okay, perfect. All right. Well, one of the things, and, and I just want to thank Jennifer so much. I think this was very helpful, and I know this is something that so many people struggle with. And this podcast is going to be posted in the first week of 2023, which Perfect. is in a few weeks. Perfect. And I think that so many people, that's one of their intentions. They want to get themselves organized mm -hmm. and they just, they don't know how. They it don't know how. Be overwhelming. If you don't have the gift for organization like you and I do, mm -hmm. I think mine is the oldest, being the oldest of five children. I'm just good at telling people what to do. And yeah. You know, <laughs> you know, what you can't do yourself, delegate to others. That's right. That's right. Anyway, so thank you very much for being here. Um, one of the things that I always do on my podcast is I have a fun, interesting, or unusual fact about Waco. And what I want to talk about today is that Waco is the home of the Dr. Pepper Museum. It is only one of two museums in the country that are dedicated to a soft drink, which I thought is so interesting. And the Coca-Cola Museum is the other one that's located in Atlanta, Georgia. Have you been to the Dr. Pepper Museum? Yes. It is so interesting. I like the big the big hole, the big yeah. hole in the floor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Dr. Pepper, I didn't know this until I started doing some research. It's the oldest soft drink in the nation, and it was created right here in Waco in 1885. Mm -hmm. So I was trying to figure to 1985. My math is not good. So that's about 100 and, gosh, 135 years. Wow. It's been around for a long time. It's considered the national drink of Texas, and the building housing the museum currently was originally the Artesian Manufacturing and Bottling Company building, and it was constructed specifically to bottle Dr. Pepper. It was used for that purpose until the 1960s. So if you come to Waco, it really is worth a visit. There are three floors of exhibits. There's a gift store filled with Dr. Pepper memorabilia. There is an old-fashioned... Uh, a soda fountain that's working. You can get like a Sunday or whatever. I did that. So if you come to Waco, the Dr. Pepper Museum is definitely worth a visit, especially if you are a big Dr. Pepper fan. Can I squeeze in something yeah, special? Yeah. I'm not a fan of Dr. Pepper. However, yeah. there is a s small number of Dr. Pepper, Dr. Pepper's Dr. Pepper bottled in, yeah. but it's created with pure cane sugar instead yes, of yes. the refined sugar. Right. And and there's a little town a little ways away where you can get that Dr. Pepper, but they sell it at the museum. You can't buy it right. at the stores, but you can get it at the shop in the museum. I've heard that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That they do use the pure cane sugar. The pure cane the... Dr. Pepper. And yeah. evidently that's just the cat's meow. It's the best thing ever. Yeah. For those who like Dr. Pepper. If you're a Dr. Pepper fan, that's that's what you want. Right. And 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 one more thing about Dr. Pepper, he yeah. can cut this out. But um we used to be a pepper. I'm a pepper, you're yeah, a yeah, pepper. I that. Yeah. Wouldn't you like to be a pepper too? Yes. I'm I old Lego. That. that ages both of us, but <laughs> right. Oh <well. laughs> okay. Well, that is another episode of Taking Care of Your Temple podcast. And I hope that this was really helpful to you guys in clearing out the clutter because ladies, I just strongly believe that when we have a clean, organized environment that we function better. Now, obviously, there are exceptions. As Jennifer pointed out, there are some people who don't. But um, I hope that this was helpful to you all. Come back again next week. We'd love to have you. Bye. Bye.